This is Terry Blankenship on Lake the Ozarks, uh, one of the biggest lakes in the state of Missouri. It has awesome fishing. Uh, I started fishing it back whenever I was actually a kid, maybe even before I can remember because my dad would always tell me about stories about me fishing prior to being where I could remember, but probably some of my first success in crappie fishing was offshore fishing and did really well doing that. This dock shooting thing started evolving and we did dock shoot years ago but it was really simple you just kind of shot into a slip because there wasn't boat hoist or anything like that. It can't claim to be the pioneer of the fine tuning of dock shooting but I got in on it at a very early stage. The prime time is late November, December in the fall is the best and then it starts again around late February to uh, end through March, maybe into April. I will dock shoot year round, but it won't be at the prime at that time, all the time. So you just have to kind of weigh it out with conditions. A lot of docks and a lot of different possible uh, patterns that you can choose from, like whether it's a main channel or a secondary points or main channel points or back in the cove, whatever, you've got some of those docks somewhere that you're gonna find that you can for sure uh, find fish on. There will always be fish under docks because it's a structure of its own. So that's why it's such a special sport. And to me, dock shooting is probably the most exciting crappie fishing I've ever done. Whether you care to uh, invest into the crappie fishing like I have. You know, I've got a lot of great electronics. It's not necessary, but all the tips to hopefully you've learned from us today and that you'll be able to go out and catch fish freely anytime you want to. All right, when you look on this 360 here, all those specks right there, that's crappie, the majority of it. There may be some perch mixed in with it too. What we got here is we got a, a big dock it's got a lot of platform on it. It's kind of on the channel swing, which helps too. And we got about a 12 inch hole that we're gonna shoot into. And you know, I'll shoot into smaller places, but most time I can make that shot most, most times. And so, but what I'm seeing is a lot of fish underneath this dock. And I'm just gonna try to make a couple of shots here and see what we're gonna get out of there. I'm going to start with about a six count, and there it was already. There he is. It's, it's a little guy. There seems to be an awful lot of fish under this dock, and they do look pretty small in the electronics. But there's also a few big ones in there, too. So we're going to just mess around here and see if we can't figure out how to catch the bigger one. There's a six count. One already hit it. There we go. Now that's a little better. Probably dropped to about an eight count. And so if that's what the pattern is today where the little fish are on top and the big fish are deeper, we'll try to drop past the little guys. It's about six foot. There's one right there. He's on it. Yep, he finally let go. Now I'm probably to about an eight. And there he is. Yep, missed not how to get past the little ones, but we're going to try a different hoe here for just a little bit. Going to give them a break. But it's a bite every cast right there. We are blessed with a lot of different sized fish on this lake right now, too. Well, we just finished up off a main channel dock here and almost caught a fish every cast. A lot of fish under it, but there's a lot of small ones and a few keepers mixed in with it. So we're going to actually go uh, back into a cove a little bit and see if we can find a little better fish. All you got to do is get on Lake Ozark and look around a little bit and you'll just see docks everywhere. There's, everywhere you look, there's docks and there's docks of every kind. Matter of fact, there's a little pocket right over here 
a little shallow area that has potential for a good fish. So I'm going to use my electronics and I'm not going to fish unless I see fish. So we're just going to pull up here in this little pocket and just see if there's any fish on these docks. These are shallower docks. The dock we just left was right on a kind of a main channel swing that sets over 40 some foot of water. And this is just the inside of not really a cove, but it's kind of inside swing of the channel where the channel's really behind us. And this has shallower water around the dock. So what we're going to do is just look and see if there's any fish under them. And if there is, we're going to try them. Back there, we were sitting over 30 and 40 foot of water. We're already in 14 and haven't got to the dock, so that's why I'm kind of looking to see if there's any shallow fish over here. And a lot of times when you do find these, they could be big ones. I'm looking for the docks typically that has a little platform on them, which will help harbor the fish, keep them in the shaded part of the dock. And we're out pretty early this morning not really got a lot of shade that they have to run to so some of these fish may actually be out from under the dock and moving around a little bit right now so uh, I see a few fish there I'm going to check it out a little bit more because they did look like there's a few bigger fish right there sometimes I want to run the front and the sides it gives me an idea about how deep they are back under the dock and if I get a good read on them this time, I'm probably going to have to stop and fish it. Yeah, it's not a lot of fish, but when I see something like that, I feel like that they, maybe it's just some later fish. So we're going to make a couple shots here just to see what they are or if they'll bite. What I'm doing right here is there's just a really maybe a two or three inch crack right there. I put uh, I've got this on heavier line. This is an eight pound test line. I normally shoot with six, but there's a chain right there. So if I get on one here and get a, get him caught, a lot of times I have to deal with that chain. So I may try to force it out a little bit harder. So if this works out and there's a fish there, we're going to try to catch a big one right here. I was hoping that there'd be a big in there. These are the kind of places that seem like those big guys don't get bothered at. It's just a little trickier to get to, a little harder shot. A lot of people don't mess with it. And it's in my kind of spots. That should tell the story right there. Decent keeper. Let's try it again now. Running another dock just looking. So far I don't see anything there. Now I'm starting to see a few. May hopefully be under this pontoon, which is about one of the, maybe the only place I could possibly reach them. There's a little bit of a shot right there. And there's fish back in there too. So should be able to catch some. There's not a lot, but there's some right there along the edge of that pontoon.
There he is. Decent keeper. There's certain baits that will skip better than others. It kind of depends on how deep you got to get it. But like the baby shad, uh, these baits right here, swim ours and the baby shad, they, they'll skip pretty good. But whenever I really want to get a, a long distance shot, I'll pull out a miniminder or a, a three inch uh, slab slayer. And for whatever reason, they seem like they'll skip sometimes another, maybe five feet farther, which sometimes five foot's what's critical to get that big bite. We're going to try to get a little deeper in there. Pretty fair shot. Very light hit, probably small fish, yeah. As much as anything on dock shooting, you got to have this high vis line. And by that that gives you a chance to see your line be able to tell uh, if it just slacks up or a little pop anything that can give you some indication that you're getting a bite and it's good and calm today so this helps a lot by being able to see that line movement sometimes my line just slacks up you don't feel it or anything it just slacks up being this fall there's a lot of big fish i kind of move back into these coves so now we're gonna go back and look in some coves and under some shallow docks and just see what we can find back here. But first thing we do is okay, kind of dress down, kind of start to sweat. That should be a good one there. There he is, dude. Oh, get off that metal. That's a good fish, too. There we go. Looks like a good move. We got out of that wind a little bit more and made it to where the dock shooting's a little more accessible. Somewhere on this lake, you can get out of the wind. Another good shot. I just know them are gonna catch them. Oh, there he is. Another decent fish. They're liking that color. Pretty solid. We switched up to this. It's a monkey milk with a chartreuse on it. It's called sour milk. And it seems like it's working really good. Every time I made a good shot, I get bit on that color. One thing about dock shooting, it's not just Lake the Ozarks. Uh, we got a lot of docks here, but there's a lot of lakes I've been on. It's got a lot of docks. Uh, absolutely go, love going to other lakes that has docks. And it seems like no matter where you go, uh, the fish like to get underneath these docks. So it's it's always a, uh, a good technique to have available. Whenever I'm fishing docks, if I see somebody on a dock, I will avoid the dock. You know, I do, but you know, there's a lot of people don't mind. But I just always advise, just try to be nice around around the people on the docks. Always try to be courteous when you get around the docks. Well, today this was our color of choice, fish in clear water. We started out with mayfly, not maybe necessarily in this order, but we used the mayfly. Did really well today, and then this uh, pink lemonade. Uh, Seem like it's always got a, a good bite to it, and the ever ever popular blue ice it is just always something you got to throw. And then if this bait right here, this one is called bluegrass, and it's a bluegrass baby shad swim R. And then you go to the miniminders. Now this is uh, called monkey milk. It's always a good color to have monkey milk when whether it's in baby shad or in the miniminders. And this is also a miniminder, and this one's called Love Bug. And it is a dominant color for our lake. And then whenever we got towards the end of the day, we started trying to try something a little bit different, and we started catching some pretty good fish on this. And this one is called Sour Milk. Okay, this, this head is set up for dock shooting. We've got this one glued on to where it will stay on there. 
uh, for dock shooting because of all the friction that you put on one. And we've got three more heads sitting over here that will actually, uh, is designed for dock shooting. We got the head doctor. Uh, it's specially made for uh, pushing a bait on and holding it tight. You got your Moglo head, and then we got a blank and chip shooter. The blank and chip shooter has got a coil lock on it, so you just screw the bait on and it'll hold the bait on. So with these three or four options that we got here, uh, any one of them will be great for going out and dock shoot. This is a tight knot on, on this jig, and I, I like a tight knot because I always, whenever I pick my jig up, I almost automatically take and pull my line back to the back of that eye. And what that does is it makes that bait lay more horizontal in the water. And it's just an automatic thing for me to do. Every time I make a cast, I do it, and I sometimes don't even know I'm doing it. But it does present the bait at a more natural look. It's almost uh, something just a gimme for me because I know I catch a lot more fish because of it. I've been shooting for years, and uh, so it automatically I always hold the jig kind of uh, between the finger and the thumb and try to turn that hook up. But for the, for the people that's really starting out and a little bit worried about getting a hook in their finger, Bobby Garland come up with these pull tabs. These work awesome. This is a tear-proof, waterproof material, very tough. It's got a pre-punched uh, hose so that you can just lead your tip of your hook to that and just pull it and just pull it through there. And then whenever you want to shoot your jig, you hold that pull tab. Your fingers are free of the hook that way. So for those that are new at this and, and uh, want to be a little safer about it, uh, I recommend throwing this pull tab on there and it will prevent you from being worried about getting a hook in your finger and go catch you a bunch of fish. This also has a pretty flashy design to it, which if you've ever seen shad that's uh, been hit or wounded, you'll see a lot of little specks in the water, a little flashy, sparkly stuff. And this little design right here creates a little more flash and a little more uh, wavy action. It has that wounded shad look. It has a flutter fall to it. So. I highly recommend for people that are starting out dock shooting to start with a pull tab. Hopefully you've learned something from us today and this has been a fun day. We caught a lot of fish. I hate it, but I think we're going to have to go home. So we're going to give it up and we're heading home. Oh, dang. I put that jig in the six inch hole about anywhere I go and I couldn't hit that big cooler.